Hunter x Hunter episode 85, Light X and X Darkness. We got some new management. Nefer P2. Man, she's just taking over. Taking charge. She knows immediately what's going to be devastating for everyone else. He's going to pick up the nan energy. Probably. His radar is up the charts. Yeah. He could probably push it for a shorter time. There's the light in the X darkness. Thank God. Yeah, I think we may all be sleeping on Bisky a little bit. I have my suspicions. I think Bisky's the real deal. I don't think we ever really saw her do anything to her limit. She was just having a good time. That's not a coincidence though. Though might feel like it. It's a like classic thing when the student is ready, the, the master appears. <laughs> it's funny because the episode I posted today on YouTube, I literally was like, it would be amazing if it turns out that Jing made this whole thing just for Gon. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. And more. As I was saying, it's no coincidence that Gon and Kolo keep meeting the right people at the right time. I mean, first of all, they're they're like in the world of Nen. Everywhere they go is attracting then people. And like I said, the classic thing of when the student's ready, the master appears, which also works the other way. When the master's ready, the student appears. Speaking of Greed Island, this is one thing that is very video game like about life. Just like how in games there are conditions for moving to the next area or level, opportunities unlock with things like knowledge, skill, perception. What's well, cool to think about is how they're always around us all the time. Like life is so infinitely interesting. Assuming you're not just like, you know, locked up in a, a cabin in the woods with no internet connection and you're out engaging with things. Just a very simple straightforward example if you live in a foreign country that has a native language different from your own of course what you have access to the people you have access to the conversations you can have the connections you can make will scale greatly with language ability this will only mean something to people who follow k-pop but recently one of my closest friends who happens to be the best speaker of korean out of any foreigner i know had the opportunity to meet espa in a professional capacity which obviously would not have been possible without his ability trying to make this practical i like to think that one way to conceptualize a path in a place of uncertainty is focusing on the skills that have the widest range of usability so that you're like opening up nodes, even ones you can't see yet. I've never done this, but it just occurred to me it would be cool to try to map those out in like order of what those would be. What are the things you could focus on that would be the, the most usable cross discipline? Going in his reverence and love for Jing. I mean, it is amazing. Yes, I remember. Hard to know exactly like how deep his clairvoyance goes. I mean, pretty far. If Jing knew about the Chimera Ants, <laughs> that's just negligent. Unless he also knew somehow that they would defeat the Chimera Ants. Yes. Uh, more than that. Wow, he's, yeah, he's listening to everything. More than just like failing training. It's like the world could end. Based on the fact that Gon has his DNA. Well, it's not about what you want when Jing is concerned. It's about what Jing wants. Just like that guy's name. Yeah, and you might die. Yeah. If it's any consolation, if you fail, everyone dies. So. <laughs> Damn, can't really raise the bar. And again, he's saying this just as they had the realization that he's the first real hunter. They came up last episode with the uh, ant gang. ゴズレの狐熊が残す縄張りの死ぬだろこれを見たらどんなのんきな動物も隣山まで逃げるほどやばいもんだあれも森の掟ビッグイベントエンゴンズライフジンに変わってルールを教えてくれたジンジャスア
get through this to find Jing. I love this like never ending question and dilemma. Is Jing the, the best father or the worst father? Is he even a father? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I feel a little bit inspired by the knowledge that there are more options. <laughs> You can just have a great kid and not do anything. I don't even need to make Creed Island. I'll just like leave a list of old RPGs and a memory card that has data that hints vaguely at my location. And if you can't find me, it's not my fault, you know, because I gave him everything I could possibly give, which is my DNA and some games. It's also great how through that lens, the whole Ant Armageddon is just a stepping stone to the real challenge of finding my father. Kite's the man though. Jing, to his credit, could not have picked a better mentor figure. I also feel like that Kite speech is another example in a long running thing for Gon. People keep reminding him to be aware and respectful of one's environment. It's a reminder that he sorely needs. And to Gon's credit, he listens when he knows there's something there for him. As stubborn as he is. <laughs> Some of us were just born with it. Oh, that's way past 45 meters or 50 meters. I guess that's testament to both him and her. Oof, that, uh, after that speech, that's terrifying for Kite to say that. Training's over. I can't help you. Damn, it's like the Eye of Sauron over here. Yeah, what is her- oh my god, what is her range? Like a mile? Kilometer? That's how that is so insanely fast. No way. No way. No way. Okay, it's just an arm. Shake it off. The speed that she located them and closed that distance is, is ter unreal and terrifying. You, you didn't need to. Yeah, you didn't need to subtitle that. You could use a bad roll right about now. This hurts, but Gloop may be saving him there. Who didn't waste any time thinking about that one? I have a really... Really bad... Feeling about this. Ugh. Doesn't look impressive, but we only got one hand, so... I'm getting that sick sense I get sometimes when I realize the most like gripping thing that could happen is the thing I want to happen the least. Please God, no. Yes. I was, yes, I was also overconfident. And we've, they baited us into it like leaning on Kite. It's like, well, at least we have Kite. Well done. That's, that's some real guilt. Yeah, we were looking ahead to the card thing. We were elated. It was a training exercise and then it wasn't. Then it all happened in like three seconds. They really not going out, huh? Very somber version of this theme. If you were there, you'd understand. Oh, I know that. I know one of those people. Doesn't feel great. Yeah, we. we I was hoping for. I mean, uh, mixed feelings. I'm happy to see you. I was hoping for more of you? We're like five minutes ahead of you there. I just shut up and get to work. <laughs> we have much bigger. This doesn't matter. Cannot understate how strong they are and there's more coming. Use Nen is also an understatement. How do they compare? Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong, but what he's not understanding is he's probably about to encounter the same exact type of panic. Since so much of peace of mind and self-esteem is, is like the mental image you have of yourself and where you fit in the world and how easily, how well, how efficiently you can navigate away from danger and towards success, any change of framework towards the negative will throw you into disarray. But that is true for anyone and literally everyone has blind spots. And you'd imagine especially people who are like this... I don't know, arrogant? Arrogant seeming? Like, uh, like it just, uh, give him the benefit of the doubt, I think he just doesn't have the perspective about what's going on. For him to be like, you know, taunting Kalua after everything they've been through. I feel there's a great humbling coming for them. 
Well, I mean, that is true. That is what just happened. Right, and also, or it can be masked. Uh, I mean, I got mixed feelings. This is especially terrible for Kalua, who already has these concerns. Go may be dead. There's so much talk about optimism versus pessimism and, you know, which group of people gets closer to the truth. And there's this pervasive idea that often pessimistic people are more correct. Anecdotally, I don't find that to be true. I don't think either one of them has, uh, you know, any kind of truth value. I think the goal, like always, is truth, or, or at least just accuracy in evaluating your situation and how to proceed. Thinking is crucial, right? Optimism goes wrong when it's a blinder for actual risks, or if optimism is like a mask for not wanting to look at things that are real and painful and learn how to accept and overcome them. Negative thinking goes wrong when you are creating obstacles that don't need to be there. Personally, I do think that in the absence of information, you assume the best. But that's also if the, the stakes for being wrong are not like death, you know, or game over events. Kalua like had some pretty solid information and my gut tells me what he did was right. I mean, he's also trusting Kite there. It's kind of infuriating for me to put myself in Kalua's shoes and listen to this lecture because Kalua knows something this guy just doesn't know. And that's already annoying when you have to listen to somebody lecture you about things you know they don't understand. But also because it ties directly into a lot of Kalua's internal turmoil about like, can I act? Will I always run? Can I save people? Can I overcome my self-preservation instincts in service of other people? So even knowing that he's probably right, the insecurities will gnaw at him, I'm guessing. Come on, Netero, balance this out a little bit. I don't think you have that luxury at this point. I guess. I think you just need to send everyone in the world. Oh maybe we're related. Why? This seems like a waste of time. Why don't we just all fight the ants? This is very Netero. Under exam never ends, because it's just life. Well, they will. There's no question of that. They're in it. It's just like, they gotta be in it in the right way. They do no one any good if they die for nothing. I wonder how Gon's gonna feel when he wakes up. Kalua just alone, by himself, dealing with this. Yeah, he really took that to heart. Best thing I could have said, and that's exactly what Kalua needed right now. Thank God. Something. Some solace. We still don't know his fate, which also will weigh on them. In the absence of evidence, I think you believe the best. Imagine training under these conditions. On the one hand, that's gonna amp up their energy and efforts. On the other hand, it's hard to, like, just sit back. <laughs> this is framing. He's the light. Aw, that's so sweet. It hurts a bit. He's, he can't see it. But no one else knows he's going through it really. So he's just suffering through it alone. No! This damn song. <laughs> damn it! Wow. Yeah, I got lured in there big time. No, we have, uh, you know, Big Brother Kite. Not everything is as bad as it seems. We've been handling everything well so far with, you know, barely a fraction of his power. And then going like, trust me, he's fine. Well, yeah, you know, it could be. Let's not assume anything. I thought she had adopted a pet as they are wont to do. I thought she was stroking what's his name's hair, uh, her servant. I think when and Kalua together, they, to a certain extent, represent exactly what I was just talking about. I mean, I think they've even directly articulated that where Gon is the one who, you know, has this energy and rushes in and Kalua is the one who takes a step back and thinks things clearly. Neither one of them is categorically right. It just depends on the situation. And the goal, as usual, is something like truth. Practical, usable wisdom from truth. I mean, Gon, for all of Kalua's adoration of him in that moment, being light, was wrong. And Kalua 
oh, clearly made the right choice. Gon in this case happens to be right in his energy and the fact that we're not we're not defeated or defeat is not final. Defeat or failure can maybe be looked at as just information to be used. It's more data towards understanding the truth. I think there's a switch that can happen or maybe it's a gradient of understanding where at its earliest maybe or initial form, there's this idea that there's a separation between you, the child and like the authorities or experts, which are often the adults. But then as you get older, that distinction can become increasingly narrow to the point where you realize we're all much more similar than it first appeared and authorities are flawed, get it wrong don't have all the answers and then with that knowledge you increasingly become your own locus of decision making and judgment of course with the humility that you also are flawed and get it wrong but like taking responsibility for that at least not outsourcing you know the protective layer to the outside world or to other people you make your decisions and you live or die by them there's something scary but also really freeing about that Kalua, you know for all his stubbornness and for all his willfulness and for his independent streak he still feels very much sometimes like a child looking for approval or someone to tell him he's doing a good job which works to his detriment in that situation i don't know i think he handled it as well as he could have given the danger and severity of the situation but all it took was like you know someone with a license to call him a failure combined with his existing anxieties to make him spiral into like a feeling of worthlessness that only gone could solve because of how much he loves going one thing i would love to see for Kalua is like him becoming that locus more and more as he develops because i mean i think we all can see he has what it takes i think it's safe to say this is my favorite episode of the chimera anarch so far i mean it's pretty masterfully done from start to finish it's one of those episodes that is an episode but transcends an episode and also kind of leaves me guessing where we go from here you know i thought we were headed in one direction but now it's like going in Kalua alone in a very real sense